I recently met Amy Lacey, who is among the top 1% of female business owners. Y'all know why? She sold the majority of her company, Kelly Flower, in an eight-figure deal. That's cool, but you want to see even cooler? She invented cauliflower pizza. Hallelujah. Today, Amy heads up Sour Salt Nutrition, pioneering a new superfood category. All of this is impressive. Her best-selling author status, serial entrepreneurship. This woman's a baddie, y'all. But when I met her a few weeks ago, I was stopped in my tracks when she said she credited some of her business success to forgiveness. This is an unconventional conversation with a complete badass entrepreneur. We did not talk about business at all, y'all. We talked about letting go of pain and hurt from your past, tactical ways to forgive the unforgivable, and why unforgiveness might be harming your business. Ooh, this is a re-listen kind of episode, y'all. It's a re-listen. Kind of talking to myself here. You know, forgiveness is a decision that you make, and healing is a process. Yeah. So I know this sounds odd, but like letting go of that, sometimes you wonder like, well, am I still going to have an edge to me? Am I still going to oh. be a badass? Well, ha. Huh. Man, no. I am freaking honored to get to talk to you again, a second time. Mm-hmm. Not only is this just a brilliant businesswoman, mm-hmm absolutely brilliant what she's accomplished you have such a generous good heart and i i've listened to a ton of your interviews just been going down a rabbit hole with you and just the way that you approach this world and your worldview i just wish we could just spread it all around and have a lot of respect for you amy thank you so much for joining us you said in our conversation a little bit ago that you have a a big heart for topic of forgiveness. And I know we could probably talk about business for an hour straight. (laughs) Just everything that you've learned and everything you've accomplished. Man, I wanted to kind of dig into the forgiveness topic with you, friend. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity of the impact you're making in this world. Before we get rolling and I answer some or give you some really deep questions, I wanted to go back to your childhood, really, because you said in another interview that you weren't spiritual growing up, which was so interesting to me because when you look at the brand you've built now, I mean, you're just oozing spirituality and impact and calling and faith and all this. And I'm like, you weren't spiritual growing up. That's so interesting. So what were you like as, as a young woman? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm the one that's honored to be here. I'm like, when we did the interview before with Glenn, and then you said, would you come on mine? Then I started cyber stalking you. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I worthy to be on here, Heather? Like you are awesome. So I hope my community starts watching you because you're amazing. Yeah. So I didn't grow up with any kind of religion. My mom was a single mom. We talked about this before. She was a single mom accidentally got pregnant with me. You know, I learned this later on and it was a hard thing to learn. I was actually hosting a women's Bible study and I invited my mom and my mom said, it was during last year when they were having a big thing about Roe versus Wade out there. And my mom announced to the group that if abortion had been legal, I wouldn't be sitting here because she didn't want me. And that her big dream was to go into the Navy and be a nurse. And I knew that she had wanted to be she a nurse. She said that in front of you? She did with oh. a group of people. Oh. It was hard to hear, but I knew that already. So growing up was a bit of a struggle when she was a single mom. It was hard. She did the best she could. And that's where forgiveness comes in. So my dad was an alcoholic and my mom left my dad. So it's like, when I think about my mom, I have so much forgiveness because I think about what she had to go through. For that statement alone, for knowing that she didn't want me and that I added stress to her life or she wasn't able to fulfill her dreams, I've forgiven her for that, those feelings and those comments, because I know she did the best she could with what she had. She kept me. She didn't put me up for adoption. You know, we were pretty poor, but I never felt like I was poor. But Mm -hmm. religion wasn't going to church. That wasn't part of our life. And then she married got remarried. They're still married today to my stepdad. And he was an atheist. And there was a lot of yelling and arguing in the house once they got married. And I just couldn't handle it. 
So I ran away from home. I just couldn't handle the toxic environment. How old were you? I was 11 when I ran away. Yeah. Well, they got, they were together when I was about nine and I, they got married when I was 10 and I ran away when I was 11. And then I went Mm -hmm. after many different trials of being in a foster home, a couple different foster homes that the principal at the school actually had a lot to do with getting me into those. And then I, I lived with my real dad for a while. That was a big disaster and he was never home and he was out and so forth. Um, but yeah, I didn't discover religion until I had my own children. Mm -hmm. And well, I, I take that back. I met my husband and he was Catholic and I converted to Catholicism to marry him. And I spent two years with him on senior rentals in New Orleans, Louisiana, which is like you're Baptist or you're Catholic. And so I spent a lot of time with the Monsignor Reynolds, but this is nothing against Catholicism, but I just didn't get it. It was a ritual for me. Yeah. It was just going through the motions. And so when my kids were born, I put them in a little private school. It was a little Christian school. And I used to go to their chapel. They had chapel on Wednesdays Mm -hmm. and I would go just so I could like soak it in and learn. And then one of their piano teachers accidentally invited me to a Bible study So my name's Amy. The last name is L and she had a regular girl that was in her Bible study. That was Amy L very close to my last name. And she accidentally sent it to me instead of her. And I accepted right away. I guess I was the first person, but this group had been an established group. They had been meeting together for years. And so they're like, what do we do? We've got this person that has said they want to come Mm. and do we let them come or do we tell her it was a mistake and they let me come. And I never knew, I never knew it was an established group. That's really where faith came in for me. That Bible study changed my life. It was a Beth Moore study on the book of James. I know some Beth Moore. (laughs) So yeah. So I have learned through my faith how to forgive. I lived a very angry life for a long time. I was a very angry person. I can't believe that. Oh. Because you just seem like light. Like you just have so much joy and like light. Oh my gosh. Well, you tend to implement what you grew up with, right? So again, I forgive my mom. She did the best she could, but she grew up in the most toxic household. Her dad was very mentally ill. And back then you know, my grandmother, you didn't leave your husband. She eventually did, but my mom grew up in that. And once I understood what my mom grew up, then when my mom would rage, I could now understand it. But as a little girl, when your mom comes home from work and you never know what you're going to get and she rages and then cries and apologizes, that's what I remember of my mom. And so, you know, as a teenager, I can thank my dad for showing me what an alcoholic drug addict looks like. Cause I never yeah. wanted to experiment. So I got to see him be not so great. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to be like that. Um, but I turned to other things like food, food became an issue for me and trusting people was an issue. Mm-hmm. And so faith allowed me the chance to forgive, to learn what forgiveness is, you know, forgiveness is a decision that you make and healing is a process. Yeah. I learned that in, in counseling, the minute I started to forgive, then I could heal, but you can't heal until you forgive. And so one of the techniques, boy, I'm giving you a mouthful. I I stop for a minute. This is the real stuff stuff because And, and, you know, we talk a lot about Mm -hmm. like calling and business and tech, you know, tactical stuff. Everybody loves all that. But what's been on my heart a lot lately is the thing that we think is a thing is not the thing. (laughs) Like there's usually some underneath, you know, something to be healed from some Mm -hmm. kind of deeper rooted issue, because a lot of our resistance to growing stuff and building what we feel called to build, sometimes you come across these roadblocks and yeah, sometimes it is a tactical thing we need to learn. But for me, it's been a lot of inner work that I've been faced with of like, Mm -hmm. Heather, if you're constantly struggling in your business or being uncomfortable being on camera or finding time to do X, Y, Z, like what's really going on and 
again, mm-hmm. not to make everything overly deep and overly spiritualized, but I think there's a lot more beneath the surface than sometimes we admit. And you've accomplished so much, like, holy crap. But also you're a woman who has a powerful story of healing. And there's, like I said, there's a lot to learn from you tactically, but you sharing this kind of stuff, man, this is the real shit, you know? It really is. And I 100% believe that you will be held back until you can move forward internally, until you can face those demons or face that history, face that past. You cannot grow. You can't, your business won't grow. And I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that at all until it just kind of organically happened. So the minute I discovered faith, then I discovered, okay, I can forgive. Mm -hmm. I can have an attitude of gratitude because you hear it all the time, but it's true. You can't be angry and have gratitude at the same time. So I started journaling, which you hear that all the time too, but it is very powerful. I started journaling all of the things I was grateful for, for my mom. And, you know, I used to pray all the time as a little girl, not even knowing anything about God, please, God, give me a family. I want a family. Mm -hmm. And I have a family. I have a beautiful family now. And my mom is a part of that family and my stepdad. But, you know, it's just, it took a lot of internal work. And my business, when I went to that Bible study and I accepted Jesus into my life, and I'm not here to tell people Mm -hmm. that your business is only going to grow if you accept Jesus. I am very, like, I have a lot of friends that don't, believe, aren't believers. I grew up with non-believers. There's no judgment there, but I know for myself, the minute that I accepted Jesus, the minute I could forgive, the minute I could start working on healing, which is a process, my business grew and I didn't even realize how fast it could grow. I mean, what happened to me later on in life is I got really sick and I had held on to that anger Anger will manifest an illness. Preach. Unforgiveness will manifest an illness eventually. Yeah. It yeah. will. And forgiveness, oh, forgiveness to me, it's more for yourself. I hate to sound like that. It sounds a little selfish, but no. if you hold on to anger and you can't forget, that's why I think you see sometimes like I watch Dateline and things like that. (laughs) I'm obsessed. So sometimes you'll hear in court, I forgive you. Like they've murdered your child. And you're like, how could you ever forgive that person? Mm -hmm. It's for themselves so they can move forward. For me, I had to forgive. I can remember my mom telling me your real dad is narcissistic and he doesn't love you and you need to stay away from him. And yeah, he was, he was not a good person. He's no longer alive. He died basically alcohol killed him. And when he was drunk, he wasn't a nice person, but I had to forgive him and have some kind of a relationship with him as a way to be able to move forward for myself. It was for myself, that forgiveness. And I'm grateful to him because addiction runs really strong on both sides of our family. And I think watching him self-destruct has allowed me to not be addicted to alcohol or drugs because as a runaway living for a while on the streets, it's very easy. You're around those kinds of people. You easily could be become an alcoholic or a drug addict very easily. So yeah, I think forgiveness is very important and it's the start of the process of healing. And if you can think of it, I, I will talk about forgiveness and people will say, well, there's no way that I can ever forgive that person. And I'm like, but can you forgive them so you can be healthier? So you don't wake up one day like I did and your body's attacking itself and you're in so much pain. If you can forgive, you can heal. So I had a traumatic event happen when I did run away. You know, I was 12 years old and it was with a 23 year old Marine and a very bad situation. And you can fill in the gap, like you can fill in the blanks there. And for a long time, I couldn't forgive myself. I blamed myself. I didn't share it with anybody. I was scared. I blamed myself for putting myself in a weird, bad position. But then I, I realized I had to forgive him. And this is really creepy. This is really eerie. 
part of my process and everybody goes through a different process of healing, right? Mm -hmm. Part of my process was I wanted to find this guy not to confront him. I just wanted to know who he was as a person. Like, is he in jail? Like, who is this person that did this to me? Mm. And I found him online. Now, prior to finding him online, and I'm squirreling, by the way, I've done so many talks and people call me a squirrel. I go this way, I go that way. I'm with but, you. I'm here. So I'm, I'm trying to heal from what this guy did to me. And I find him and prior to finding him, I had been having this dream and I don't always remember my dreams, but I had been having a dream about a bear attacking me in my front yard, a bear attacking me. And it was like the front yard of my childhood house, the one that I ran away from. When I looked this guy up and I, and he has a very unusual name, I won't say it on here, but I was able to find him. He didn't look much different. And this is... I'm in my forties now. This happened to me when I was 12 years old. So mm. this is, you know, yeah. 30 years later, I found him online and his profile picture was a black bear. I freaked out. Now it wasn't the same bear that was in my dreams, but it was a bear. He loves bears. He has pictures of bears, bears in the wild. I was having this dream constantly of a mm. bear attacking me in my front yard. Now, the incident that I had with him didn't occur in my house or in my front yard. It didn't. It occurred somewhere else. But I literally went into counseling over that because that bear, just that whole thing just freaked me out on that. But I had to forgive him and I had to move forward with that. I had to forgive the toxic household that I was growing up in with yeah. a lot of yelling and screaming and forgive yeah. my mom and realize that she grew up way worse than I did in her household. And she mm -hmm. really learned that behavior was a learned behavior. And she, and I didn't want to do that to my kids. So I was very intentional when yes. I would get angry about how to go about talking to my kids. And I was a rager too. I followed in my mom's mm -hmm. footsteps. It wasn't until I went and got counseling and I accepted Jesus into my life. And I went through the whole process of forgiving that I stopped raging and I didn't even recognize I was doing it as I'm sure my mom didn't recognize that she was doing it. So forgiveness is for yourself more than anything else. So when you're thinking there's no way I can forgive that person, like how am I supposed to forgive a Marine that, well, an ex Marine that I don't even know, how do I forgive him for what he did to me? I have to do it for myself. And the minute I started forgiving was the minute I started healing and things like the cauliflower pizza crust came about because I had to go gluten-free, grain-free because my body was attacking itself mm -hmm. with inflammation. Stress causes inflammation. Trauma causes yep. inflammation. If you yep. don't forgive, you can't heal. Healing is a forgiveness is a choice. Healing is a process. And you've got to go through the process in order to not have some kind of trauma manifest itself years later in an illness, which is exactly what happened to me. So I believe that my success as the first cauliflower pizza crust on the market and eventually selling an eight figure business and being number one. And I, I say that I'm not bragging. I'm just saying Go that ahead. none of that could have taken place had I not gone through the process of healing. And I am still working on it today. Matter of fact, tonight I fly out and I'm doing this silent retreat that my counselor who was a pastor recommended out in Nashville where I'm turning in my phones and my computers and he does it in four different segments. And, and this weekend is about the heart. So I'm, I don't know what I'm in for, but I'm in for four days with no electronics and no phone and probably a lot of silent time with myself. So oh. we'll have to have part two of this and I'll have yeah, to tell you what I learned about myself. <laughs> Here's the deal. You don't have to share any of this. You don't have to be transparent about your past, what's happened to you. I mean, there is no reason for you to share any of this stuff. And it's just, it's so generous of you to be open about it because, you know, looking at what you've built, what you've, you're still building, we could be like, oh, well, that's nice. It's so great that Amy's just gifted and talented and was born with whatever without realizing what you've had to push past and overcome and fight through continually to get to where you're at. And that's what gives me hope. That's what's going to give our listeners hope. So thank you for your generosity with that. 
I'm curious your perspective as a businesswoman and a leader. You know, there is a lot of masculine energy in this space, which I'm grateful for. There's such a place for that. It's been interesting for me to try to navigate, you know, you'll hear, use your pain, use your struggle and grit. And like, you're going to kind of hold on to it and use it as like a, a driver, which is powerful. People will do that. But then there's this other side too, where it's like, well, yeah, but also there needs to be healing and coming from a, a clean place, you know, and sometimes folks want to hold on to something because it's their motivation and their driver. Yeah. So I know this sounds odd, but like letting go of that, sometimes you wonder like, well, am I still going to have an edge to me? Am I still going to oh. be a badass? Right. Oh, what is I your perspective this. on that? Well, huh. when I did sell off a big chunk of cauliflower, which was just booming. We were doing so well. We were number one on Amazon and for 16 months straight. And we were at the SB's Emmys, Teen Choice Awards. We were at all these events and it was just a cool experience. But then the Northern California fires hit and my mom, my stepdad, and my aunt, their houses didn't burn down, mm -hmm. but they had to leave the town of Paradise. It was called the Campfire. It happened in November of 2018. They had to leave their homes because there were no running water, no electricity. It literally wiped out a town of 48,000 people. And here I find they're all in my house, which I'm like, well, how, how are we going to navigate this? Because yeah. they're not going to get the insurance for their houses. They each got 30 some odd thousand for damage or what have you. We're not going to be able to sell their house. And where are they going to move to? Like the homes are getting scooped up. So I had been offered some offers for my company and I thought, okay, this is, this is God's redirection telling me that I need to take this offer and move everybody out of Northern California, which is what I did. But what happened was the venture capitalists and anybody that's worked with venture capitalists has had a very similar experience, but I hadn't worked with anybody like that. And, and cauliflower was my fourth baby, right? It was something that I raised that I was very passionate about that really changed my life. And I was like very in protection mode of the brand, protection of my team, protection of the recipe. I didn't want anything to change. And they come in and they see, you know, they come in there right away. Like, well, we have to build a foundation. You don't have a foundation that's strong enough. So they change everything. Mm. And I was angry and upset and fighting them, you know, things like, and you know, a, a lot of things, I'll be honest with you, a lot of things I was right to fight for that I think that they regret now, but there were a lot of things where I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I look at it now, I was so angry and I got, you know, we, I moved everyone to Florida. I bought my dream house. I live on the water. I, I have a beautiful house. My kids are thriving. My husband starts his new practice and it's booming and everybody's doing great, but I've lost who I am. I'm no longer the CEO of Cauliflower. We're not doing those amazing events. My entire team, the venture capitalist fires, almost everybody on my team, but two people, wow. Wow. they decide that I'm being too argumentative with them and they're, they're not able to move forward. So they put me on sabbatical and say, you know, get healthy, enjoy your family. You've worked really hard. You deserve this time. And I am angry. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm just angry and it's eating me up. And it wasn't till about a year and a half ago, two years ago that I realized that the rejection I was feeling from them was God's protection for me. Ooh, it was boy. just redirecting me to where I am today, which is launching oh, this new company. But I had to get sick again, get angry again. It was like, I'm repeating history again. I've been, in my mind, abused by all these men that are venture capitalists, right? There was no yeah. women in the group. And they're anti-women. This is my theory. They're anti-women. They're shutting me out. I know this business better than they do. Mm -hmm. They're saying we need to build a foundation, but the foundation's there. We're doing all these great things and, and they're hurting the business. That's how I took it. And I took it as rejection and I found myself that little girl again, that little girl that my dad didn't show up when he said he would, because he was out drinking that little girl that my mom just raged. And then she cried to apologize to me. I'm that rejected little girl and I'm angry and, and pissed off. Oh, and right. these men have just come over come in and taken care of. 
I'm that victim again of that Marine. I'm the victim of the venture capitalist. No, I was choosing to be that person and I wasn't forgiving them and I didn't see the gratitude behind what they were doing. Mm. And so I had to go through that whole process again. And I really do believe that sometimes we can't see what God has a plan for us, right? We hear that all the time. Like God does everything for all good, but we don't know what it is. And we may never know what it is, but there is a reason why things happen. I believe that. I believe everything happens for a reason. Well, God was just redirecting me to be in a different position, to launch a different product to, you know, cause as soon as I went on sabbatical, I was like, okay, I'm depressed. I'm not doing anything. My kids are thriving. My husband's thriving. I got to do something. So right away I went into, let me help other people. I knew that was one of the ways that healed me from before is helping other people. So I started this brick and mortar to click and order COVID hit. I couldn't meet new friends. I couldn't really go and do anything. So I started helping people take their brick and mortar business and put it online. And some people became very successful. So that was fulfilling that I was helping other people, but I was still very angry and very toxic. And I told my team one day, I can't do this anymore. Like, I don't feel like I'm helping people at the level I could because I'm too ingrained in anger. I've got Mm. to work on getting rid of this anger. So then through that anger, And lack of gratitude, the attitude that wasn't of gratitude, right? I had no gratitude to the venture capitalists, even though I made millions off of them. I had no gratitude. And this is where I started thinking, well, health is really the new wealth. And you hear that all the time, but health is the wealth. I have everything. I have a dream, my dream house. I, I can buy whatever I want. I just wrote a national bestseller cookbook. I have all these accolades, but yet I'm miserable because I I don't know who I am and I don't know what to do every day. And I'm just wallowing in this anger and people didn't want to be around me either. Nobody wants to be around somebody that's always angry. So then I started doing what I had learned before and started writing a gratitude list to the venture capitalists. What is really happening? Why am I really grateful? Well, I have this sabbatical. I have this time. I've gotten sick again. I gained weight again. I'm back on some medicines again. I started researching another superfood and found it and discovered it and realized that it was healing. Okay. I'm grateful that I had the time to research and, and do innovation again. I'm grateful. I had the time to help people in brick and mortar and click and order, but more importantly, I'm grateful that I have the time to be with my family again, my kids, because as a CEO and a mom, it's a hard juggle there. And I've got to forgive these people so I can move forward. So I just really believe their rejection was God's protection for me and, and really redirecting me to know, okay, you've got to go back into that healing space. So just because you get healed once and you forgive once for something as traumatic as somebody abusing you Mm. as a little girl, as a young girl, a young woman, 12 years old. Just because you went through that once doesn't mean that you might fall back into that again. And sure enough, I got sick again. I got sick again during COVID, not with COVID, with like my body started attacking itself again. I gained weight again. I started suffering from inflammation and I got really depressed. And so that's how I found the new superfood. And now I look back on all of that and I think, wow, I wasted a lot of time being angry. Mm. So I say to people about forgiveness people can do the worst things to you, right? They can abuse you sexually. They can take your business away from you. They can, I mean, I haven't experienced this, but going back to Dateline, they can murder somebody. And if you can't forgive for yourself, it's going to manifest in some ugly way in your body or, you know, to other people around you. Because during that time, Nobody wanted to be around me. I was just constantly angry. And Mm -hmm. I have so much gratitude now for the venture capitalists because I wouldn't be where I am today without them if they hadn't come in. And yes, I got to make a lot of money off of them, but I can remember thinking, okay, now I understand when people say money doesn't buy you happiness. It makes life easier, but it doesn't buy you happiness. Happiness comes from within. And you, if you want peace, you want happiness, you've got to forgive whatever is making you angry, whether it's right or wrong and start doing the process of healing, but you can't start the process of healing without forgiveness first. 
and the attitude of gratitude. Like you can always find something you're grateful for. Like my dad, there was very little to find there. The stories I have and the memories I have, you know, being a 10 year old girl and having him drive me from the bar and he's in the back seat with some woman and they're like going at it. And I've never driven a car before I'm 10 years old. Stories like that, I have a lot of them. And I, I can remember being angry with my mom, like, why did you let me see him? And she's like, well, you had to figure it out on your own. But I look back on everything and I think, wow, the minute I was able to forgive and start the healing process, amazing things happen. Amazing mm -hmm. doors opened up. Mm -hmm. And so that forgiveness has to be for yourself. And I forgive my dad, but I'm grateful I got to see that because I have never had an alcohol or drug problem even though many people in my family have, yeah. and I never have, and I never will because, you know, I've had other problems <laughs> instead, but yeah, the minute I was able to forgive and start that healing process was the minute my business started to thrive. So I so always powerful. say work on yourself first. Yeah, definitely. I don't think I've ever asked anyone this question before. This is something I've really been trying to navigate. I'm a pretty ambitious gal. I like that about myself. I don't want to change it. Sometimes it annoys people around me because <laughs> uh, I, I have this kind of bent of, I don't want to say dissatisfaction, but just I have like, it's like my hobby to get better and, you know, grow. I, I enjoy it. I really, really enjoy it. However, I... I know that there is a lot of trauma and pain attached to that mm -hmm. where it's trying to overcompensate and it's not always coming from yeah. a healthy place. So yeah. I'm curious with you, how do you navigate the God-given gift of ambition and embrace that while still keeping your hand on the unhealthy side of ambition where like the root of it may be coming from trauma or unforgiveness because I have a really hard time recognizing that in myself and I get mm -hmm. defensive and people are like, you know, maybe you need to like slow down and like whatever. Yeah. I'm like, you just want to change me. And I'm like, you know, I know that's not good either. I'm so curious how you navigate that with all you've accomplished and then navigating a healing journey too. So it's interesting. I don't think I got that until recently. Really? I think, okay. yeah, with cauliflower, it was growing and booming. And I just was like, more, more, more. Okay, we're going to launch pasta. We're going to Italy. Okay, I'm going to write a cookbook. I taxed my team, mm -hmm. but they were so pro what we were doing that they were jumping on with me. And when I found like my right hand person and myself started losing not our families, literally, our husbands weren't divorcing us or anything like that, but literally our relationships that are, are the most important thing, right? They're more important than anything else. Like the relationships with my children, the relation, her relationship with her kids, we didn't even realize how toxic it was with our families. Our families were rooting us on because the success was so powerful, but we weren't recognizing that in ourselves. And when it all came crumbling down, when the venture capitalists fired her, we realized how toxic it was and how we needed to slow down that ambition. There is, there are important things. I just watched, I wish I could think of his name. And he said, if you want to know a real successful entrepreneur, then they're successful in all areas of their life. They have mm. a successful relationships with their kids, with their family, with their wife, it isn't about making millions of dollars and cheating on your wife or never seeing your kids because you're out grinding the whole time. And they, and they talk about the physical part of success too, which I still struggle with, which I'm trying to build the habits of always doing movement and always, you know, I think that's important, but, and it really hit home. It's like, yeah, we were, we were making a lot of money, but were we really successful in life? No, mm -hmm. we were ditching our families. We were leaving our families. Nobody was calling us out on it either. Mm -hmm. Our husbands weren't, they were trying to support us, but it was really a lot on them. I, I can remember people were calling my husband, Dr. Mom, because he was doing the mom thing and the doctor thing. And it, it wasn't healthy. So I say, I learned that just recently because I had to have it all taken away from me and literally just be at home in COVID, no longer the CEO, no longer in charge. I mean, the venture capitalists, they didn't just put me on sabbatical. They told the team they 
that they couldn't talk to me and I wasn't allowed to talk to them and they changed all my passwords. I went from having everything to nothing. That's rough, man. And it was oh. during that time that I realized though COVID had hit and I remember going out at recess. I don't know when you have your kids at home from COVID going out at recess and fishing off the dock with my dream house with my son mm -hmm. and us talking very awkwardly. It was my youngest son and I had been gone so much. And I remember thinking, all right, God, I gotcha. This is part of my success journey. This is mm -hmm. maybe I'm not running this eight figure business right now, but I'm sitting here fishing on the dock with my son and rebuilding that relationship. And mm -hmm. success isn't just constantly going and making money and building things and writing the next book or being on Oprah or whatever success looks like to you. It's also remembering everything around you, your health, your daily habits, the people that you're close to, your family, your kids, like having a healthy relationship with everybody. And, and it goes right back to forgiveness too, because I needed to work on my mom again on, on that healthy relationship as well. You know, I've been married for 25 years. I'm so blessed to have a husband that supported me through everything, but how healthy was our marriage if I was gone all the time? Yeah. And right before COVID hit, I added up the number of trips I had taken for the last half of 2019 and it was 59 trips. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I was gone for half the year, just yeah. gone. Just one trip. I, I would do interviews and and I remember just lumping them together because the flights could be cheaper if I did a three or four way flight rather than coming home and then going back. And it was just so unhealthy. So I say to you or to anybody that true success, I think is, you know, a lot of people say, show me your network and I'll show you how successful you are. Well, I think show me your relationships with those closest around you. And that'll show me how successful you are. So whether that is your boss or whether that's your partner or whether it's your kids or your, you know, your spouse or the people that are closest to you, how successful are you with them? What does your relationship look like with them? And to me, that's true success. Success. And then what does your health look like? Are you healthy? Mm. Are you like I was binge eating? That was my big thing. I used to binge eat a lot everybody would leave and I would binge eat. And that was so unhealthy and I could get away with it for many years because I didn't gain any weight. And then all of a sudden, boom, I started gaining a lot of weight and I still struggle with those things today. I still struggle with, you know, binge eating or binge shopping. I have to really be intentional about what I'm doing and building those habits, small habits, small daily goals, one day at a time. And know that deep, deep down what you're saying is true. It's just so nice to, again, have somebody who has built things say what you say. It's not worth it. <laughs> right? Well, it's not that it's not worth it. I wouldn't trade my cauliflower experience for anything. Sure. But I think this is somebody said, one of the counselors said this to me. She, she said, Amy, when are you the happiest? When do you feel the most peace and the happiness? Is it when you're on stage talking to people? Is it when you're looking at your sales numbers for the day from Cauliflower? Like what makes you the happiest? And I had to really think about it because those are fun things, right? When we're selling a lot, one time we were selling a pizza every three seconds. Those are exciting numbers. You know, throwing a party for the cast of Hamilton in New York for pizza party. That's, that's an exciting time. That's cool. But I think the most peaceful time I had and the time that gave me like the most peace, the most enjoyment, where I could just relax was when I was just hanging out at home with my kids playing board games. That's when I was the most peaceful. And she's like, okay, you will be more successful in life if you can do more of that. Or like a challenge, like my kids, we would challenge each other to do something like we all learned to scuba dive. So we would go diving, doing events like that together was a highlight for me. Also, she said, you need to do more of those things that bring you true joy and peace. And then everything else, the pizza sales and all of that will explode. You just have to focus on what brings you more peace and joy because those are, those are key. And I really believe too, people always 
you know, they go like, we're getting ready, right? It's December, New Year's, people are going to have a bunch of New Year's resolutions. They're going to want to lose weight. They're going to want to start an exercise program. Mm -hmm. And then, and I've been there every year. And then within like six or eight weeks, we stop doing it. And I would say, don't do the New Year's resolutions. Don't even write the New Year's resolutions. Write your five-year plan, your three-year plan, your one-year plan, and then do daily steps, daily. Like I love Glenn's I'm going to get it for all the team. I told him that he just reached out to me about that. I need to follow up with that. But I love just like, you're going to build habits that bring peace and joy by mm -hmm. just doing small little things every day. Yeah. Yeah. Small little things every day. And then eventually they become big things. So as far as your health goes, that's what I, that's what I recommend for health is just small daily steps, movement, mm -hmm. drinking half your body weight in water. Those are my goals. Like I need to move. I need, if I'm sitting behind my desk all day, I need to go out, take my dog for a walk, yep. carry some hand weights while I'm walking, you know, and, and move, move yep. my arms, move my, cause I'm in my mid fifties. So my arms are a sensitive subject for me these days and just move for the relationships. Again, I just, I journal about who I need to forgive, who I need to reach out to, what brings me true joy and try to have more of that in my life. And then I'm building a business right now. I'm launching a business. I'm better at my business when I have a little bit of peace. I've noticed in the business that we just launched, like there are already some struggles, right? We already had some co-packer struggles, which is really funny because I, I was like, Oh, this is like birthing a child. I forgot the birth pains, how hard it was to have the baby. You forget those. You just remember the joy of the baby. I'm like, I forgot about all the co-packer issues I had with Cauliflower and they're rearing their ugly head right now. But the difference between the way I handle them with Cauliflower and the way I handle them today with Soursop Nutrition is totally different. I'm so mellow and so peaceful. Whereas before I was like, you know, just like, ah, like frustrated and telling people off and you better do this. And I am so different and it, I'm grateful because half my team with Cauliflower came back to work with me on Soursop Nutrition, including my right hand person. Yeah. yeah. Including my right hand person who developed cancer after Cauliflower, after she was fired, realized what, how toxic our relationship was building that company for her kids rebuilt her relationship with her kids. And, you know, she moved out of her area, bought a house in Texas, and she has just recently come back. And it's like, mm -hmm. we're setting boundaries with each other because it's really easy for us to start working and grinding again, success. Mm -hmm. You know, we get so excited about that. And she and I are both like, okay, no, nope, it's family time or nope, it's exercise time. we got to so set real. boundaries. So real. I did a lot of boundary work including during my forgiveness time, I had to do boundary work because you might have toxic people in your life and sometimes they're family members and you can't get rid of them. Like it's just impossible and it, yeah. it wouldn't be the right thing to do. So you've got to set boundaries. You've got to learn boundaries. And Henry Cloud does, I don't know if you've, you're a book reader. Oh yeah. He's got a great, I've heard him lecture. I actually got a chance to meet him and I've read his books and I've done his boundaries work. Boundaries are key too for your inner peace and to move forward. Oh, so. I'll link that up in the show notes, y'all. It's been a few years since I read that book, but I need to reread it. I need to reread it. I take everything you said to heart. I fully thank you for sharing yeah. all of that. I needed to hear it. Y'all needed to hear it. <laughs> Anybody Just, in the back? Anybody? In the back? <laughs> so I suggest you write down what gives you the most peace and joy. Oh, I love that. And if it, it's grinding and building your business then great, but set some boundaries with the people that come in that are toxic. Forgive yeah. those that you need to for yourself. Yeah. Be selfish and forgive for yourself and work on the healing process. For me, healing is the attitude of gratitude, just writing down what I'm grateful for, in particular with that person. To forgive my dad was hard, but I'm so grateful because I know I'd be a different person today if I hadn't seen what he, the self-destruct he did. I might mm. be an alcoholic. It runs. And you think family. about the generations that come after you, how you've switched the game for them. And that's oh. the coolest. I remember one of my counselors said, Amy, like they know I did EMDR, which I didn't mm -hmm. believe in when I did it. And I'm like, are you kidding? This tapping thing isn't going to work. 
are you kidding? I had this total mind block on it. But I remember she said to me, you know, you've, you've broken the odds. Like you technically should be probably living on the streets, Mm -hmm. never had a successful business, not had a family and certainly not been married to the same person for 25 years. I've never had an affair. I've never cheated. And she's like, usually people that have been through what you've been through are promiscuous or cannot be faithful, cannot stick with one thing. And I think, you know, not the faithful part, but sticking with one thing is just those small little every day, just writing yeah. down what you're going to do that day and sticking with it. And, you know, I, I've had a lot of anxiety too. And I've had to really force myself to do things, right? Like force myself to overcome my anxiety and show up, show up for myself. And that's something I just recently learned too, because I could use the excuse, I don't feel good and not go. But as hard as it is sometimes to step into a room, especially a room where you don't know anyone, if you just do it, it starts to get easier and easier. So what boundaries, forgiveness for yourself, Start the healing process so you don't get sick like I do. Wake up at 40 years old and be terribly sick. I do believe food is medicine, so put the right things in your body. Tell us about that. We have a final question, but I want to give you an opportunity to share about this new business you started. I swear I've never in my life heard of this food before until meeting you, and this is fascinating. (laughs) Well, look it up because it's so funny that I created the Cauliflower Pizza Crust because There was just a head of cauliflower out there when we created it. And cauliflower is ugly and it's stinky and it's white. I love it. I think it's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, but a lot of people didn't love it. They love it now because it's bland. It takes on whatever flavor you put it with. But it is the last Mm -hmm. veggie standing on a veggie tray at a football party every day, all all the time. (laughs) Maybe not now, but it it used to be. (laughs) So now I've discovered this fruit, which is about the ugliest fruit I've ever seen in my life. Tabitha Brown was eating it and she was eating it with her brother. And he's like, this is ugly fruit. And she goes, yeah, but you know what? This ugly fruit takes care of the ugliness that's happening in your body. And I thought that's so true because this fruit is so powerful. It's called soursop. If you've never heard of it, look it up. It is, it's ugly, but it is. How did you feel? I got sick again. That's right. And my right hand person, who's like a sister of me, was diagnosed with cancer and my mom was diagnosed with cancer and this fruit kept popping up. Now I don't promote it for cancer. I would never do that because that's just not right. But I know that this fruit is builds mass immunity and it builds it. It it helps when your body's attacking itself, it's fighting for you when you don't even realize it, it does cell rejuvenation. It builds up immunity. It's, full of antioxidants. It's just this super fruit, super food with superpowers that nobody's ever heard of. It's not that, here in the States. And, and so some people are starting to grow it. I found a farm in Florida, but mostly it's grown in the Caribbean and it's been around for centuries. I went to Seychelles to find it in South Africa, an island off of South Africa. You went there? I did this in in August and I found trees of it and I found people that used it when they make soup out of the leaves when they're feeling sick. And I found the fruit along with other fruits. There's other amazing fruits out there, but this fruit has transformed when I got sick again, built up with anger again, Hmm. all the, you know, sitting here looking out the window of my dream house thinking I'm, I literally felt suicidal. I remember a guy lecturing in Boulder, Colorado in the food industry saying that entrepreneurs have a high suicide rate. And I remember thinking, thank God I have my faith and my family because Mm -hmm. I would never do that. But I was that depressed and I discovered Mm -hmm. this fruit and it, it's not really used for antidepressants, but I think it's a natural antidepressant too. I can never promote it for that, but we are doing a clinical trial on gut health. And you know, gut brain health, that could be a whole nother episode that we talk about. I've learned a lot about gut brain health and what, what that does for you. And this certainly is a powerful fruit for gut brain health. We're coming out with shakes and we have the first soursop gummy and we have shakes that have other amazing things in it. Like just other superfoods like goji berries, elderberries, turmeric, 
I've added some magnesium and various different vitamins and antioxidants as a powerful shake or a food booster. You can put it in and make soups out of it, muffins out of it. It's a powder. And then we have a skincare line coming out because the skincare is amazing. And I have a lot of people testing it and I'm like, you're not allowed to like do anything like Botox or whatever all yeah. that stuff is. And they're putting it on their skin and they're loving it. I have a youth line and an anti-wrinkle line that's coming out in the spring. Poor Jesus. I'm going to send you samples. Yes. I just got a bunch of samples of um, the packaged uh, gummies and I'm sending them to my VIP. If you sign up to be a VIP, you get the products first okay. and we have a and we have discounts. So if you go to Sour Top Nutrition and you sign up as a VIP and you buy the purchase the gummies, you become a VIP, then I'm actually sending out samples right now. I'm actually for Glenn's audience and I'll do it for yours too. Many of them re many of them reached out to me on Instagram because I answer my own Instagram private messages. And so I'm actually, before I leave town tonight for that event, I'm signing a bunch of my cookbooks to them and sending them the sample pack of soursop gummies and the cookbook, sending it out to his uh, listeners that reached out to me. So many of them did. I couldn't believe it. I'm I sure you know it. a lot of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They so. don't play. Those people don't play. They don't play. <laughs> so if any of your people want to reach out to me, it's, hey, Amy Lacey follow me, reach out to me. I will reach back to you. I manage my own account, which is why it probably looks like hodgepodge, but I just, I'm just real. I just put it out there, whatever. And the VIP thing, if, is that, there's a time limit on that? If I put that in the show notes too? No, there's not a time limit. We're pre-launching. So if you go on and you become a VIP member, you're going to get the sample products before. So you'll get samples of the shakes before samples of the skincare line before we actually launch them. Okay. And then you purchase the pre-launch of the first product we're launching, which is the gummies, which we're launching in January. And then I'm sending out, I, I got sample packs of them. 15,000 of them came yesterday. Ooh, boy. <laughs> so I'm like, I need 15,000 people to send these to. I want people to try it. It's an eight day or excuse me, it's eight servings, four days, try it, see how you feel after a week or after awesome. four days, you'll feel great. So awesome. yeah. Awesome. Well, I will put all of that in the show notes. Uh, very last question for you and I'll let you get on to your silent retreat. I'm kind of <laughs> jealous about that. That's cool. I'll, I'll have to let you know what that's about. Oh, I said, it sounds like a dream. I'd probably be shaking in like two minutes. Like, I know. Uh, what is something that you are deeply questioning right now. I've been asking that at the end of these episodes because I want to normalize asking questions. You know, it could be as something as simple as why in the world are there bre breakfast burritos at Taco Bell all the way to what is our existence here in this world? I mean, it could be anything, but what is something this season in your life that's a question that keeps coming up for you that you don't know the answer to? <sighs> well, the first thing that comes to my mind, because it's just weighing heavy on my heart, is the food industry oh, and the supplement industry, really. But the food mm -hmm. industry, you know, the FDA allows a 20% variant on the labels. So you could have 20% more sugar, 20% more yeah. bad stuff in your product. And I, I talk about this a lot. It's weighing heavy on me. How are we getting away with doing this to people? Because people don't realize it. And then I question it is our country trying to make us sick? Like, is this population control? I mean, I'm going to get, you're going to start getting hate mail now when I go no, into these go. kinds of things, these conspiracy theories, but I'm questioning it. I'm like, how is it that I can go to Italy and eat a regular pizza and I have no inflammation, but if I eat anything here, I'm inflamed and my body's attacking itself Preach. and I have liver disease, non-toxic liver disease, and I don't drink and I don't smoke. And it's like, how is it? Well, it's our food. How is it that we have, I mean, this is very conspiracy theory, but how is it that we have so much attention deficit disorder? Is it that we didn't know what it was before? Stating yeah. It. Is it the pesticides in our foods? Yeah. Like why are we allowing? It's because everybody wants to make money. It's this money thing. I don't know. I'm questioning all of that. I'm like, why do I need to take supplements? I've never taken supplements, but now mm -hmm. I'm finding myself creating a supplement that I can share because mm -hmm. I have to take it. And that's how it's because I don't want to be on Western medicine. I don't want to yeah. be on medicine. 
but yet our food isn't enough. And I was preaching forever. Food is medicine. Food is medicine. No, it's not enough here. The food is not enough here to sustain us. We've got to add other things into our diet every day because our food, you know, we can get away with a lot. And I know this from being in the food industry. So I'm questioning that. I'm questioning why mm. we're able to get away with that. Like, mm. not that I ever did that because I didn't, but there mm. are, you know, you have to know the FDA allows a 20% variant yeah. on your, and that's anybody can put out a supplement. That's why I'm so passionate about getting in a clinical trial because I want to have something that differentiates our product from just any supplement out there. Yeah. So I am questioning the food industry. I, I <laughs> promise this is it. I know we're over time. Real, 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 real quick. I heard you say in another interview that you need to check labels because there's fillers in a lot of stuff that we think is healthy because it's a powder. Honestly, I have no idea how you would look at a label and know if there's a filler. Is it just say powder? Is that what a filler so is? fillers okay so i'm obviously i'm referencing the cauliflower pizza crust because there's right. so many out there and so we used fresh cauliflower fresh vegetables and like the same with soursop even though i have a powdered shake it doesn't have any fillers in it i don't have a filler in it i've taken the well i can't really tell you the process but the point that i'm making in those interviews right. is there's a lot of fillers that people need to make their pro product, if they don't want to use fresh vegetables or fruit because it's expensive, it's more expensive, they can use a powdered version where they fill it with rice flour or some other kind of filler, which those fillers still cause inflammation. So that's what I'm referencing when I talk about that. So I always say people read the ingredients, you know, read if the ingredients. powder, that means filler. Well, not necessarily. It depends on if you're not using fresh fruit or fresh vegetables, then yeah, you need to look at what they're using okay. in place of it. Okay. Like what is it that's the binding agent? Is it a filler? Is it something that's unhealthy? Okay. So. You are generous, incredible. I think the absolute world of you. Thank you Thank so you. much for taking time out of your day to join us today. Thank you so much.